Hello and welcome to AJ Storytime channel for kids. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell so you can see me when I'm reading live. Today's story time is about playing. Let's play. This is the story time theme for today. The first book we are reading is called Love You Forever, written by Robert Munch. Let's play. A mother held her new baby and very slowly rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she held him, she sang, I love you forever, I like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. The baby grew, he grew and he grew and he grew, and he grew until he was two years old. And he ran all around the house. He pulled all the books off the shelf. He pulled all the food out of the refrigerator. And he took his mother wash and flushed it down the toilet. Sometimes his mother will say, This kid is driving me crazy. <laughs> Remember the story time thing for today's Let's Play. So he's just playing. But at night time, when that two-year-old was quiet, she opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor, looked up over the side of his bed, and if he was really asleep, she picked him up and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. While she rocked him, she sang, I love you forever. I like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. The little boy grew, he grew and grew and grew, and he grew until he was nine years old, and he never wanted to come in for dinner, he never wanted to take a bath, and when grandma visited, he always said bad words. Sometimes his mother wanted to sell him to the zoo. <laughs> But at night time, when he was asleep, the mother quietly opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor, and looked up over the side of the bed. If he was really asleep, she picked up that nine-year-old boy and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I love you forever. I will always love you. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. The boy grew, he grew, and he grew, and he grew, and he grew until he was a teenager. He had strange friends, and he wore strange clothes, and he listened to strange music. Sometimes his mother felt like she was in a zoo. But at night time, when that teenager was asleep, the mother opened the door to his room, crawl across the floor and look up over the side of his bed. If he really was asleep, she picked up that great big boy and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. While she rocked, she sang, I love you forever. I'll love you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. That teenager grew and grew and grew and grew and grew until he was a grown-up man. He left home and got a house across town. But sometimes on dark nights, the mother got into her car and drove across town. If all the lights in her son's house were out, she opened his bedroom window, crawled across the floor, and looked up over the side of his bed. If that great big man was really asleep, she picked him up and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I love you forever, I like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. Can you imagine how she's carrying that man? Well, that mother, she got older. She got older and older. One day, she called up her son and said, You better come see me because I'm very old and sick. So her son came to see her. When he came in the door, she tried to sing the song she sang, I love you forever. I like you for always. 
but she couldn't finish because she was too old and sick. The son went to his mother. He picked her up and rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he sang this song. I love you forever. I like you for always. As long as I'm living, my mommy, you'll be. When the son came home that night, he stood for a long time at the top of the stairs. Then he went into the room where the very new baby, his daughter, was sleeping. He picked her up in his arms and very slowly rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while he rocked her, he sang, I love you forever. I like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. The end. Such an amazing story, right, guys? I love it. Wow. And so touching, right? The way the mom loved the boy, no matter how old he got. I have another book for you. This one is called What Should Danny Do? And this is by Gannett and Ari Levi. Remember, the story time theme for today is Let's Play. Let's see how this book is. I love all these amazing books that I'm reading. For the parents, these books, you need to read it to your child before they make it to kindergarten. 1,000 books before kindergarten, okay? Hi, my name is Danny. My favorite things in the whole world are soccer superheroes and ninjas. I also love skateboards, but I don't have one yet. You may be wondering why I am wearing a cape. So I let you in on my secret. I am a superhero in training. That means I have some superpowers, but I am still working on the rest. For example, I jump super high. I run super fast, I have super muscles, and even though I cannot fly just yet, I'm still working on it. Daddy says that my most important superpower of all is my power to choose. With this power, I can change my day by changing my choices. He even gives me the coolest new capes so that I won't forget. Today is a special day because you'll be making choices for me. When you get to the end of the day, you can start over and make a difference. Make different choices. Then we'll see if the power to choose really does change my day. Ready? Let's go. Um, do I smell pancakes? I love pancakes. Zoom downstairs. Chocolate chip pancakes. Yay! But then I see my brother Charlie eating from our ninjutsu ninja plate. That plate is my favorite. I want the ninja plate, I say. I know you love that plate, mommy says, but Charlie is already eating from it. She puts two pancakes in front of me, but they are on an alphabet place. I already know my alphabets. What should Danny do? Eat the pancakes on the alphabet plate yet until he gets the ninja plate. Now we could go to page 26 if you think that he should eat the pancakes in the alphabet plate, or we can go to page 16 until he gets the ninja plate. Let's see which choice will we have. Let's go to 26, right? Page 26. But I can get the ninja plate next time, I ask mommy. And mommy smiles and says, of course. The pancakes are delicious. I can feel them charging my superpower with every bite. After we finish, mommy tells us to get ready because we are going to the park. Score, I love the park. Do you want to set up a lemonade stand while we are there, mommy asks. Yes, I say. No way, Charlie puts. I want to play at the park. No work. You can play, mommy says, but you won't get to share the money if you don't help Danny. That's okay with me, Charlie says. I quickly get dressed, then make a big lemonade sign. 
Wow, guys, he made the right choice, right? All right. I get the lemons, two peaches, and some sugar. I'm lucky. I had the super muscles to carry it. I squeeze the lemons, but the last one is really hard. I summon my super strength and finally get the juice to come out. But then, oops, the juice squirt right into my eye. Ow! It stings so much. I started to cry. Charlie laughed at me. What should Danny do? Stomp really hard on Charlie's foot. Go to page 56. Or tell Charlie that it's a nice. Go to page 34. So, I think we go to page 34, right? Because it's not nice to hurt your brother. Laughing at me isn't nice, I tell Charlie. Mommy is happy I use my words to let Charlie know how I feel. She helps me rinse my eyes and the sting slowly goes away. I finish making the lemonade and Mommy lets me have a whole glass. Mmm, that makes my eyes feel even better. We get to the park and Charlie runs off to play. At first, no one wants my lemonade, but then a great idea pops into my head. I use my laser beam focus to turn the plain lemonade into super lemonade. I shout aloud as I can, fresh squeeze super lemonade, only 50 cents. Drink, same, and get a superpower for the day. My idea works. After an hour, I have just one cup left. I see a girl running towards me. I use my mind reading ability to see that she wants a superpower at her own. But then, oops, she trips and knocks my table down the last cup of lemonade. That spilled all over my shirt. What should Danny do? Help the girl up. That's page 38. Or yell at the girl for spilling his last cup. Let's go to page 38, right? I don't think he needs to scream at the girl because it was not her fault, right, guys? Let's see what page 38 say. I helped the girl up. I'm so sorry, she says. Don't worry, I tell her. It was just an accident. Her mom pays me a whole dollar for the cup she spilled, even though my mommy says she doesn't have to. Score! I made 26000 from the lemonade. I remember to get $3 aside for charity, so I have 23 left. Mommy surprised me and takes me to the toy store because of how good I have been today. I know exactly what I want to get, and I just made enough money to buy it. The end. Wow! This is such a great book, guys, because it gives you the opportunity to make a choice. You have the power to change how your day is going, if you get upset about things, right? I love this book. What you Danny do? I have another book for you. Remember that today's story time thing is about let's play, right? Our next book is called The Goody by Lauren Child. <laughs> Kristen Cross was a good child, the very goodest. He did everything he was told when he was told. He even did good things without being told. That's how good he was. Kristen always ate his broccoli every single stock, even though broccoli was his least favorite of all his least favorite vegetables. He washed his hand after every little trip to the bathroom, and of course, he always used the soap. He didn't just wet his fingers under the faucet like some people do. He always went to bed exactly on time, and he never argued, and he never whined. Bedtime is bedtime after all, don't you agree? He never ever stuck his finger up his nose. Not even when he was absolutely certain that no one was looking. And he always made sure that the rabbit's pen was clean out once a week. Even though his sister Miley was supposed to do it every other Friday. Somehow she always forgot. 
But Tristan Cross didn't mind one bit because he loved the rabbit. And he, most importantly, he was the goody. Being good, after all, is very important, isn't it? Well, Tristan's parents thought so. In fact, they have given him a goody badge. Just in case he ever forget what a good child he was, they did not want him to forget ever. If people have decided you are good, do not disappoint them by being bad. Cheerston's sister, Marley, had never been given a goodie or anything. Not even one of those goodie bags they give out at the end of the party. Millie wasn't invited to parties anymore. You see, Millie was not good. Everyone told her so, and merely never forgot to remember this. If people have decided you are bad, do not disappoint them by being good. Does that make sense? <laughs> and so things continue until lunchtime. Sherton was struggling with his broccoli when a thought of cool to him. Why does a Midley have to eat broccoli? Because Midley won, say his father. Poor Midley isn't a goodie and doesn't understand how important it is to eat vegetables she doesn't like. Yes, poor Midley, that is sad. The next week, when Sherton was cleaning out the rabbit's pen for the 40th Friday in a row, he said, Why doesn't Midley ever clean out the rabbit's pen? I have given no reminding her, say his mother. It's lucky that you are a goodie and will do it for her. That is lucky, isn't it? <laughs> a few nights later, Sherton woke up with a sticky cough, so he went downstairs to get a glass of water. And he found Midley watching TV and stuffing cereal into her mouth. She wasn't eating them carefully. A lot of them were going on the carpet. How come Midley is allowed to stay up late watching TV? asked Sherton. Oh, I can never get Midley to go to bed, say Alba the babysitter, so I just let her stay up. Now, does that sound fair to you? <laughs> I don't think so. <clears throat> Sherton went back upstairs, but he could not sleep. His head was too full of thoughts. He was thinking, I would like to stay up late watching television and eating cereal. Why is it always me who has to be clean out the rabbit's pan? I hate broccoli. Most of all, he was thinking, what is so good about being a goodie? You were probably thinking that some time ago. The following day, Sherton Cross did not wash his hands when he went to the bathroom and he did not eat his broccoli at super supper time. Nor did he clean out the rabbit's pan on Friday. And why should he? But you have to clean the rabbit's pan out because I always forget, say Midley. You are the goodie. Everyone expects you to be good. A bedtime, Sherton made horrible fuss and got to several times to get snacks. Alva looks anxious. Please be good, she begged. No, nope, says Sherton in a loud voice. I want to watch TV. Alva's eyes tear up and Sherton felt a funny, heavy feeling in his tummy. Was it the cereal? When Sherton's parents got home, they were very disappointed. But I want to be a bad like Midley, say Sherton. Goodies do not get to hurt people's feelings, say Midley. Sherton unpying his goodie badge and stamp on it. The next morning, Sherton was not allowed to go to Lara's Perella's birthday party. Lara was new to the neighborhood and Sherton very much wanted to be friends. He had made her a special card to say so. Mildred was sent to deliver it. Lara didn't know about Mildred being bad, so she invited her to stay for the party. And Mildred did. Right until the end, she even got a goodie bag. It was a good feeling to go home with something. Sherton did not feel good. His tummy was still heavy, so he went to see the rabbit. He thought washing a hop would make him feel better, but the rabbit was not hopping. There was no room for hopping, so Sherton cleaned the pan, and when he did, the rabbit seemed to smile. Can rabbit smile? 
When Mirtle came home, she said, You clear out the rabbit pen, even though it was my turn to do it for the last 23 weeks. Thank you, Shirton. Can Mirtle say thank you? You should have the goodie back, say Mildred. That's nice of you, say Shirton. Well, you are the goodie, say Mildred. You did clean out the rabbit pen. I didn't do it to be a goodie, say Shirton. I did it because the rabbit likes to help. And Shirton thought about that because it was true. Being a goodie is not what makes you nice. But being nice when you can be nice can make you feel good. So they shared the goodie bag and Shirton's heavy tummy feeling completely disappeared. Sharing has a way of making you feel better. That dinner time, Midley announced Shirton does not like broccoli. I know that, say the mother, but he eats it anyway because he had always been the goodie. And you don't because you are not, say the father. Neither of us are goodies, say Shirton. And neither of us are not goodies, say Midley. And people do not always have to eat broccoli. No, if they really hate it. Quite right. No goodie will ever expect them to. So they gave the broccoli to the rabbit instead and the rabbit seemed to smile because he was very fond of broccoli. Can rabbit smile? Chirton and Midley's parents decided to stop being disappointed because although sometimes Midley was bad, occasionally she was very bad. Mostly she tried to be nice and that was the important thing. Trying is much better not to try, don't you think? And sometimes Shirton was good and sometimes he was less good. And occasionally he wasn't good at all. But his parents always appreciated when he was. Being appreciated is very important, isn't it? I have one last book for you. And remember the story time theme for today was Let's Play, right? Barn at Night by Michelle Houts. Farmhouse snoring is time for shoring. I'm sound asleep in my bed. Gentle waking, shivering, shaking. Let's get to work, sleepy head. Oh, before dawn, a stretch and a yawn. Morning comes fast on the farm. With a heave and a shove, the door hive above, slides noisily off to one side. Turning to greet us are Ed and Milatus, as we slip quickly inside. Glowing green eyes, oh, what a surprise, disappear as we turn on the lights. We have frightened a guest and unwelcome pest who snuck in the barn late last night. Toby Cat Scary was the big hurry to sit by the milk pan and wait. Hopeful round eyes, hungry cat cries as cows thumb their hoops by the gate. Straw for a bed, hay store overhead. Molasses and milk smell so sweet. Crack corn and grain, soft fur and mane, the smell in the barn are unique. In the dark corner stall, against the back wall, stand Eleanor, patient and calm, a knicker nozzle, her velvety muscle, mudges and tickles my palm. When darkness falls and animals call, we'll go out and feed them again. Shorts in the light are adventures at night for me and my animals' friends. The barn is away, there is no mistake. Something wonderful is happening here. Every eye shows it, each animal knows it, every calf, every goat, every steer. A wind is so loud, a mama so proud, Eleanor shows us her fall. We enter the stall, and there on the stroll, he lies shivering, wet, black as cold. I don't move an inch, nor daring to flinch, holding my breath as we wait. 
On wobbly knees, with trembling ease, he takes his first step toward the gate. Yellow paints glowing, it begins snowing. Over rafters, a hood isle takes a fly. A safe place to dwell, all here is well, when we are in the barn at night. The end. If you enjoyed the story time for today, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell. And I see you next time. Goodbye.